Hey everybody, I'm back, finally. Uh, sorry I haven't uploaded videos in a long time. Definitely bit off a lot. Um, but I'm really excited to get back, and uh, the Seed to Stage Academy went really well. Can't wait to do it again next year. Um, and I'm also really excited to bring you this new series, kind of quick tips for not only uh, live use, but also mixing. And today's quick tip is going to be about uh, a little trick that uh, is really easy to do, and kind of a way to get away from, if you have a, a mix that has a lot of information in the center, and you want to get it out, or let's say you just have a single track that um, it's just mono and you want to make it stereo. There's a really simple and awesome way to do that using simple delay and utility. So let's go ahead and listen to what I have here. This is just a uh, funky break, man. Um, and all the audio is panned dead center. So we have a lot of buildup uh, in the low mid range, which is never good for a mix. And this is what I would consider purposefully a bad, uh, a bad mix here. So check it out. As you can hear, there's a, there's a bass line. I don't know if you can, you can probably barely hear the bass line because the keys are making the same uh, frequency range as the bass. Um, and so what we need to do is try to get those two elements away from each other so that you can hear them both. Um, and one of the ways we can do that is by using uh, the stereo field. Uh, right now we're not really accessing the stereo field, we're just kind of listening to these instruments just on top of each other. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, grab a simple delay and drop it in. Now, right away, you are going to have to do a couple things in order to make this work. Um, stereo information, uh, things that sound wide, are the reason that things sound wide, especially if it's the same signal, is because of delay. And let me explain this a little bit. If the speakers are doing something at the same time, you're always going to hear the audio in what sounds like the center. Okay. When one speaker is louder than the other with the same sound, you're going to hear it panned. Okay. So. The first you know, knee-jerk reaction might be to just pan these sounds. Well, a lot of the times we want to get balance, and balance is achieved by um, actually delaying one of the speakers so that the, uh, both speakers are playing kind of the same information but not at exactly the same time. Um, let's take a listen to just the bass, okay? And what I'm going to do is I dropped this simple delay here, and I'm going to turn the dry wet all the way up, okay? And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unsync the delays. Right now these are, these are two separate delay lines, okay? And if I unsync them, their default setting is 100 milliseconds. If I drag this all the way down to one millisecond and drag the other one all the way down, um, I have this is what I have. I basically just have the same signal, but it's a millisecond slower. Let's just listen to this. So, okay, we haven't solved any issues yet. What we can do, though, is we can delay one of these, and you're going to get this magical, magical sound where all of a sudden the, uh, it's going to sound extremely wide. Okay, so let's just go ahead and increase this right delay time. Right away, just one millisecond difference, and it sounds like it jumped all the way over to just the left side. But as I increase this, you get this really, really wide sound. Okay, um, and you might say, well, Anthony, it sounds like it's, it's just panned to the left. That's because the left speaker is firing first, so it tricks the ear into thinking that it's panned to the left when really it isn't. But you still get some information on, in, in the right speaker that you can hear. Um, and what we want to do is we want to be able to control this though. Like right now this is completely wide. And something I'm a stickler about is, is giving your reverb a chance to hang out. Or maybe some, some other sounds you want in, in, the, in the far panned world. If you pan this bass all the way out there, you're kind of taking up a lot of stereo space. So the next thing that you want to do is drop a utility plugin in there. Okay, uh, the new uh, update on the utility plugin is great. Um, if you don't have Ableton 10, it's fine. You can still do a lot of this. Essentially, we're going to reduce the width now. Now that we have this this wide wide delay going on, if we reduce the width, we can kind of control how how wide this is. Okay, so I'm going to play this again. I'm going to reduce the width a little bit. Okay, and then as with every single thing we do. When we're affecting our audio, we want to be able to listen to the original and then listen to the new effect at the same volume. We want a volume match. And the reason we want to do that is we want to make sure that when we make a new effect, we don't just think it sounds better because it sounds louder. We want to make sure that it sounds better because it actually sounds better. So what I like to do is select the first effect, hit shift, hit to the right, and I can select the second effect. And then if I right click, I can group these effects together. All right, 
And why would I want to do that? And the reason I want to do that is I have now an on-off button, so I can A, B the effect, and then the clean uh, original bass. So now we can listen. Okay, so it sounds pretty close in volume. What I've noticed about whenever I, uh, especially if the width was, was wide open, let's listen to that. Something that the ear does is it assumes that when something is panned, that it sounds louder, even though it actually doesn't. What's happening, especially when you have a mix, like if we listen to this without the, 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 the wide panning, if we listen to this with everything else, it's gonna sound very quiet and in the background. But once I turn it on, it's gonna sound like it jumps out at you. So listen. Listen to the bass, I should say. So here we go. See how much louder the bass sounds? Okay, so so that's what happens with the width all the way wide open. Um, when we listen to something panning, it sounds louder. So so it's kind of like you could think of it as like as as free volume. Uh, now we can take the gain and and kind of pull it down just a little bit on the utility plugin so that it sounds still well mixed. Okay, so I'm gonna go down maybe like minus a dB and a half. Okay, now we're gonna A B it with the mix. That's without it. Now we've, we're starting to get a little separation, okay? We're starting to be able to hear the instruments separately. I can hear the keys in the middle, the drums in the middle, and the bass out there. But I still don't like what's happening. There's keys that are fighting with frequencies in the drums, and we're going to try to combat that with the same effect chain, but we're going to have a couple different settings, okay? Let's go ahead and uh, grab another one of those uh, simple delays. We're going to drag it in there. Now remember, you want to turn the dry wet all the way up, you want to unsync the left and right channel. We're going to pull these down to one millisecond, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to listen to this delay on the keys, and we're going to try to delay this just a little bit differently to get a different sound. So I'm going to start pulling up the, the uh, instead of the right channel, I'm going to pull up the left channel, because why? It's going to sound like now the keys are kind of panned to the right, even though they actually aren't. It's just the speaker firing first, okay? Let's just listen to this. All right, so I'm gonna increase the time. So I like that sound around eight milliseconds on, on the left-hand side. The next thing that I wanna do is I wanna grab a utility plugin, drop it in there, and I'm gonna reduce the width just a little bit because I don't, I don't want that, especially the low end of that, those keys to be all the way out there. It just doesn't sound good to me. It sounds like it's jumbled, okay? So I'm gonna pull the width down just a little bit and let's go ahead and A-B it with the original. Remember, I also have to select both of these. You can also, uh, I did, did the shift before, you can also hit Command or Control and click the second effect, I'm sorry, Shift. You can Shift click instead of just Shift direction uh, and you can then right click group it, and now you have, again, your on-off switch. So let's go ahead and A-B these. This is without the effect. This is with the effect. I'm going to pull it down just a little bit more. So that sounds good. And, and now let's, let's talk about, uh, let's actually go ahead and play these together. This is the bass and the keys without the drums. Now you've got that really nice separation. You, it also sounds like the bass might be coming from the left hand speaker, even though it's actually not. It's just, it's just nice. Um, so now uh, I'm going to play everything together, and you're going to notice this really big difference here. In fact, something that I also like to do is I like to use the key mapper. And what I can do is I can map, let's just map a random key like Q, to the on off switch of this group for the keys. Why am I doing that? That way I can just press my Q key and I can, uh, you know, turn on and off the effect. I'm going to do the same thing on the bass. That way we can really listen to the difference. You know, so both of these uh, effects will turn on and off with just one press. We can really listen to the difference this little effect made, okay? So this is with it off. Now this is with it on. So 
so a couple things that have occurred, you know, is we've pushed the keys kind of up to the front. And so I kind of want to maybe dial that back just a little bit, maybe 2 dB. Let's listen to that. Now, to me, that sounds like a, like a balanced rhythm section. Maybe the drums are a little loud. That's okay. So what I also want to do is I'm listening to this bass, and I have a lot of bass information that's 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 really wide. So if you have Ableton 10, something that they changed about the utility is now you can you can make the bass mono. Essentially, you can take under this shelving frequency uh, by default it's 120 hertz. You can actually take the low end and make it mono. And one of the reasons you might want to do that is that it takes a lot of energy to make bass. So sometimes it's better to have both speakers doing exactly the same thing when they're trying to make bass. So the, the audible effect of this is, and you might need headphones to hear this or high-end studio speakers, let's go ahead and listen without it. And if I turn the bass mono on, right away you can tell that it sounds like there's been some sort of EQ cut to the width, okay? When this is really wide, you're gonna have that situation happen. So when I bring the width down just a little bit more, you might hear a little bit more of that low end in the center. And if it's all the way wide, you're not going to have it at all. So a good thing to do is to try to find a balance. That's what you're looking for. And remember, always use your AB. You know, it sounds like there's somewhat of a, a low end reduction. Maybe this isn't the frequency that we want. So you can just click on this and move this. Let's listen. Sounds a little bit better around 100, uh, 100 hertz. Okay, so yeah, that's that's the simple delay trick to get a lot of width out of a out of a mono channel. Okay, use this profusely. It's really it's really fun. Uh, I, it's it's been a trick I've been using ever since Ableton like three or four, um, and it's it's just really useful. Thanks for watching, everybody, and look forward to a lot more videos coming out uh, <laughs> more frequently. Uh, thanks so much for all the support. Like, comment, subscribe. Love you. See you next time.